Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking at making our own wavetables. So if you guys are using Serum or any other wavetable synth and you guys are tired of the wavetables or you're just curious about how to create your own, um, some of you probably already um, went into the Serum wavetable creator where you can edit your own uh, wavetables and you can kind of import audio files and do other things like that which is really, really cool and it's really powerful. But um, there is something that was built just for creating wavetables recently, and it's a really, really cool plugin. Um, really simple to use, and it's really inexpensive. So today we're going to be looking at Sonic Academy's Node, which is a wavetable creator. Um, it has a standalone version and a VST version, so you can use it in any DAW, or you can use it just as a regular application and export the audio files slash wavetables to use within your synths and your DAWs. So we're going to have a look at the interface of the plugin. Um, I'll give you a kind of quick rundown of how it works. I'll show you some presets that I've been creating over the past uh, week or two since I bought it. And maybe eventually I'm going to post those wavetables either in a pack or the actual presets for Node. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments section. So there's going to be a link to purchase um, Node on the Sonic Academy website in the description box. Uh, right now it's about 20 Great British Pounds, so it's about $25, $30. Um, and we'll kind of just see uh, what we can do with this plugin and how it can open new doors for our sound design within uh, our favorite wavetable synth. So cheers, let's get right into Cubase and we'll take a look. All right, guys, cool. So here we are in Cubase, like always. So the first thing um, is that you have a standalone version of the plugin, or you can load it as a VST. So I just loaded a node as a VST on an instrument track in Cubase so that I can play on either a MIDI keyboard or with the built-in keyboard, and we can hear sound like that. I could also save the project and continue working on a wavetable instead of having to make a preset and then go back to the preset if I wasn't finished making my wavetable, for example. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go over the interface of the plugin. So right at the top here, we'll start with the uh, undo re uh, and redo. Then we have the little menu. We can load, save, um, initialize our preset. We can import a wave, which we'll come back to, and I'll show you what you can do with that. Uh, you have export, but you also have the export window here, so it's not really useful. The other stuff is just some basic um, menu stuff. We have the preset browser here. Here we have the export window where we can set up five different locations to automatically export uh, the wavetable so that we don't have to uh, export it and then go back and move that file into, for example, the serum presets uh, or tables folder. Um, if you want to back it up on your computer just in a regular hard drive and you have like multiple synths, you could set them all up, you export once, and it goes uh, into all of those locations. Um, the standard size you're going to do is 256 frames, and for most synths like Serum, you're going to use uh, the export size of 2048. So that's your export window. Here you have a little notifications tab. Uh, maybe it'll show you some updates, stuff like that in the future. Here you have the actual editor for the nodes and the uh, wavetables. So you can double click, you can add your own points, and that's basically how you create your wavetable. You can also use over here at the bottom, or on the left side at the bottom, we have the tables browser, which allows us to save our own tables, or we can use any of these default ones, and we just drag them to whichever snapshot we want to use that, that, that wave in. So that's how you would save your current uh, cycle or frame as its own table to come up here, or its own uh, wave to come up there. Here at the bottom we have the slider, so as we create multiple snapshots or multiple pictures in our wavetable, using this slider we just crossfade between them or we can morph between them depending on what type of mode we're using. Here we have the disable or enable MIDI input, which we're going to leave on, it allows us to play in MIDI notes and the synth to receive that MIDI uh, input. On the right here, we just have a little fader, which it's not obvious what it is, but it's just the output volume of the synthesizer or the wavetable. 
synth, I guess you would call it, yeah. And that's about it for the interface. We're going to look at kind of how we would use Node and start to create a preset from scratch and the types of things that we can do using Node's uh, many features for morphing between wavetables and uh, how you can create different shapes and kind of edit those shapes. So starting off, we're going to initialize our preset here. So if we play a MIDI note, we can see we have no sound because our amplitude, our line is completely flat, which means our amplitude is zero. So we have no volume. Once we start moving these nodes, either in the positive or negative, you'll have some kind of sound playing, right? So. Okay, so yeah, so once you start adding points here, either in the positive or the negative side, we'll start to get sound coming out of the synth. So we can create multiple different snapshots. Maybe for the second one, I'll just drag this saw wave over. And now we can see when we slide from left to right, we start off with our red wave, and then we go towards our yellow wave as we slide and then it goes to silence. So we can turn on and off as many frames as we want and it'll cycle through those frames based on where they are in the left right order. If you want to change that order, you just drag it and drop it. If you want to copy a wave, you can hold alt and drag it to whatever frame you want and that'll basically copy it. Then if we want, so right now if these ones were next to each other, we could see that the resolution is only from the red section of the slider to the yellow section of the slider, which doesn't give us a very finite uh, control. So the way we could fix that is we could just move, and to note, at the end it goes to silence. So if we want to get rid of all those things and we want to have a, a more kind of fine control on the slider, we'll move that over to the last slot. And now we have the full resolution of the slider to get to that shape. And it never ends in silence like it did before because our last our last table is not um, silence anymore. So next we can enable this, which is uh, going from vector to raster mode, which basically means we can use these nodes here, which allow us to draw in our shape, or we can go into raster mode here, which allows us to just draw in whatever we want in a freeform like pencil. So if we go back to vector one, and now we turn on the actual uh, anchors. So I'm just going to initialize that, we'll make it more clear here. Sorry, so now we're in vector mode actually here. And we're going to be using these. Oh, wait, no, sorry, we are in raster mode. So now we're in vector mode there. And we're going to use, so if we have points one, two, three, so let's say we put one, two, three, and then four going like there. So we can see we can angle any point that we want. We can put any point wherever we want. We could add more points. And that will all change the, obviously, the harmonic content of the wave as well. That's the whole point of this thing, right? So if we go back to our vector uh, nodes here, if we go into our second frame, so we can see that we've still got points 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So usually, if you just have the regular mode and you're not using these nodes at all. So if we go back into our first wave here, sorry, and we're using vector mode, oops, and we've got these uh, little points over here. Yeah, so now we're in vector mode, right? We've got the little points um, on the screen here. And usually when we would go to the second wave, it'll just crossfade, right? So it'll, you know, it knows the starting position and it knows the ending point. So it'll just start to crossfade towards that. Whereas if we're using our node points here, we can actually define, so point two, like node number two in this frame goes here, and then we tell it node number two to go here. So we can actually tell it to shift wherever we want, 
and we can do this with each node. So number five over here starts here, and we're going to tell number five to end up here, right? So when we're using the actual uh, nodes to shift our points, we can see that there's movement from each node kind of tracking that way. So it, it tracks differently than just using a crossfade, and it gives you a much smoother uh, kind of shifting between the tables. So we're using uh, the vector points to track each peak and tell it where it needs to go by the end of the next frame. So in something like, here, we'll open a preset that I did. There, let me just reopen that. So we go into a preset that I did here, and we can see we've mapped out all these little shifting points right here. And then we tell it to move and I just basically traced very roughly the outside, uh, the peaks and the dips of this wave here using as many points. So you can see some deeps, uh, peaks and dips I skipped because I, I was just still using 24 of these uh, vector points or these node points. So now we can look at the way that that thing is going to shift and that's a lot more smooth sounding than just a crossfade. So we'll listen to it. And that was with the points off. You hear the difference of how much more smooth that transition is? So yeah, that's basically the difference is it's tracking um, the movement of each node there. So that's how you can basically work. So you, you work with those points. Another way you can um, get a good starting wave is to import an audio file. So if I click import wave, I'm actually just in uh, my Serums Tables folder, which I've got a folder of Access Virus uh, wavetables that were sampled from somebody. If I click on Import One, we can see that we get this little kind of scrubber. And in the bottom window, it's updating real time where that position is. So we can increase the length or decrease the length. We can also go into a freeform selection where you can just drag and drop the start and end point. And then once you're happy with that, you can drag it onto whichever frame you want or whichever snapshot you want. And using the same audio file, we could also create multiple snap points or multiple snapshots and import them all into different frames so that we're, make sure we turn them on. And now we're going to be shifting between those, right? But again, now we're just using the crossfade because we haven't actually assigned any of these points. So we could go in and, you know, create more, um, create more nodes here, and then go back into that mode and kind of start tracking it like this. Oops, so I messed up there. I'm just going to click the back tool and make sure I grab the node. And then you would go to the second position, and now we can see, OK, now that one should go there, that one should go there. And so we'll just do like this beginning half here. Okay, so now we've set up a bit of a crossfade there, and we can see that it's going to... See how much more smooth that sounds when we're using the vector points? It's just a lot uh, more efficient than it is to use the basic crossfade. Um, so one thing I didn't explain in the uh, interface part, which I'll just show you quickly now, is next to your slider here, we actually have the option to turn on this LFO, and that controls the rate of the LFO, which just basically automatically cycles between... Um, all of your snapshots, all of your tables. So you can enable and disable that by just clicking on the little sine wave there. So that's pretty much that. That's um, starting from zero. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is how do we get our sounds or our wavetables out of Node into our synths and into our DAW. So we're going to have to export this somehow from Node. So the easiest way to do that is by using the export window, either in the dropdown or right here. So right here, where, as I explained before, you have the five different preset locations. Right now, I'm just using the one for Serum. The export size is 2048. So if I maybe load a preset here that I made. I'm going to go to the export window. I'm going to file name it also the same as I did in Node. 
And if I click export to all, it's going to export right now directly into my serum. So I can close that out. Now we've exported that. If you want to export to a folder on your computer just for backup, you just set up a new folder and you set that up as another location. So we're going to need to reload serum if you already had it open for this new table to show up. Once we do that, we go into our tables and we have a folder that I created. So we have Nalik node wavetables and we can see enchanting is now exported and it's available right inside serum. And if we use the wavetable position knob, it's going to be the same thing as that colorful slider inside of node. And we're going to cycle through the different snapshots, the 256 snapshots of this um, wavetable. So we can see the position goes up to 256 there. <coughs> so this is what it sounds like in Serum. If we open some other uh, wavetables we did here, maybe we can just... So that's how you create your own wavetables in Node and then get them into your favorite synths and start to create uh, your own custom wavetables for your presets. Hey guys, so my phone actually cut out before. So basically that's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked uh, Node and just a basic walkthrough of how you can get started on creating your own wavetables for your favorite wavetable synth or whatever you're using wavetables for. Um, so I'm gonna drop a link to the Sonic Academy website down below. So if you guys are interested in purchasing Node for 20 great British pounds, you can download it directly off their site. And um, I'm gonna be making a preset pack of either just the wavetables or of the actual presets. Let me know which ones you guys would be more interested in if you want the actual presets for Node, or if you guys would just be interested in some free wavetables to use in Serum. That about sums it up for today. So if you guys wanna see more, be sure to give me a like and subscribe and uh, I'll have a lot more coming in the near future.